Right guys, so we've done the rudder, nice and flat, rudder fin and post, nice and flat, tail plane, all nice and flat, so well, that's all done. And a good idea when you've just covered them, to leave them on a flat surface for a while, as the uh, temperature stabilises. Now, we're going to do the wings next. So what I've done is, I've already cut a section for the underneath. And I've also cut a section for the top surface. And we are going to do this process in a particular way. We're going to do the under surface first. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick the whole of the trailing edge. And I'm going to slowly tack round and then do all the front. And then we are, with the little bit that's left over after the trim, we are just going to fold over and tack down so that when we then do the top surface, the top surface is then uh, covering the join of the bottom surface, which just makes it aerodynamically cleaner. Um, so that we're going to then roll the top surface over the top of the bottom surface. So I'm just going to do that process, I'm just going to tack around the whole thing. Uh, I'm very quickly going to just tack along the long runs as well. And then I'm going to come back and just show you a couple of little tips for just um, shrinking this whole thing down to size. You can see how I'm just starting to tack along this trailing edge and using my hand just to smooth it down you'll also notice I've got the trailing edge right on the edge of the bench so it's supporting the wing but then that's giving me the best access you'll also notice you can see it on the video that I've got about five six mil overhanging which is what I'm going to tuck over in a moment so I'm just making sure that the majority of that is stuck down, which is perfect. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the leading edge. Notice also that I've taken the plastic sheet off, that's to remember. And the other thing is, is the golden rule, as I said before, and what we're all going to chant, keep the iron moving. And there we go. That's that leading edge completely done. And I'm just going to work over the side there. Now, that's all done around the edges. And literally what I'm going to do now is just tack this up and tack it in place. So a little bit of the top surface, we've now tacked the under surface, but not shrunk it right down yet. And what I've done is I am just going to drop that over there like so. And in fact, actually, if you've got a nice sharp edge at the back, you'll be able to finish this without having to trim it. But again, you'll notice I'm just keeping the trailing edge just hanging over the end of the board, like so. I'm just using my finger going forwards making sure that I don't get any little creases. Um, one thing to note with this material, if you did happen to accidentally burn it or puncture a hole in it, you can actually just get another bit 
and you could actually just iron that straight on the uh, where the hole is over the top like a patch but hopefully um, you're not going to do that so I've done the trailing edge and then all I'm going to do is I've got the same again I've got the trailing edge the leading edge and I'm pulling it down just gently not hard it's just giving me a little bit of tension there look and I'm just sticking this as I'm going along just across the leading edge but again the golden rule is keep the iron moving and I'll just when I've got that I'm happily tacked there in place what I am going to do with the leading edges I shall trim this just a little bit, it's a little bit too long then I'm just going to roll that over and then just tack that back down now little tip for the um, the curved aspect of this um, wing tip when you've got a curve like that what's a really good idea to finish it off you get a nice sharp knife and what you want to do is about every four or five mil if you just make up a, a slash in the material like so it ends up looking almost like a feathered edge what you'll find is is that then when you come to apply it start at the leading edge and then you can just slowly roll that over like so and you'll get a lovely smooth finish and that will go over a nice compound curve so I'll just carry on finishing that off and then we'll have a little chat about um, shrinking the whole thing down and I need a cup of tea So, I've tacked round the whole of the wing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the undersurface with the iron. And you can see the panels are just a little bit saggy at the moment. But this is where you've got to be careful. Because what you don't want to do is tighten it too much because it will begin to distort the wing. So I'm just going to go down this panel, the bottom panel there like so, and I'm just going to turn it over, holding it down and make sure it's cooled, lovely. And then I'm going over to the second panel, just doing one at a time, and again, being very quick, and I think you'll find just with one swipe of this and you notice there there's a little bit saggy just at that back one there that just wants doing again and that just wants doing again but again just flipping it over and I'm just going to allow that just to cool and set because you've already got to remember is now inside the wing in those panels <coughs> between the two sets of covering the top and the bottom it's actually got quite warm and that will have a little bit of an effect so what you've got to be careful of is you just don't sort of waft in all over the place very quickly because then you'll find that the bolster will get very warm and then it'll be very easy for the bolster to twist as well because this uh, particularly this Solitex is quite a powerful um, bit of material when it starts so shrinking so I just again each one each panel Just put you backwards and forwards, get a nice, nice and tight, and then just flip that over. Just hold that in place. Just let it, just let it cool down very quickly. Don't take long. Look at that look. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same for the top surface, and I'm going to do this big panel here. And and also what I'm doing is I'm just tacking these ribs as I'm going. Now, what you might find is after you've done them all, you get some little areas that are showing a crease. There's a classic example of the crease there. So what we'll do is we'll just let that settle. And then I'm just going to quickly go back over that. The moment that crease is gone, I'm stopping, holding it down. Go and I've just got a little bit on this end one look. Again, and I'm just 
quickly going to just run that over each rib so then it's then stuck to each rib there we go just going to hold that in place just a little bit there marvellous if you overdo it you'll end up stretching it and then the ribs will actually tear through so you can see that that's keeping nice and straight I'm getting no twists or warps in it again just going along the spar and again you'll notice the golden rule you notice I've kept the iron moving the whole time so just stop that there like that nice and settled lovely just a little bit more just keep it on the edge on the end there so that I keep it nice and straight I can get the heat on it there you go See, it's, it's just shrunk a little bit I've got a little bit of a saggy point there but you've just got to know when to stop and I think look at that boom beautiful so that's one wing done now a couple of tips here you want the fabric to finish on the end because you'll notice I'm doing each wing independently because we're going to be gluing these two wings together also that's the other thing is I'm only doing a wing at a time Imagine trying to, if you'd have joined both wings together like so and then try covering them would have been an absolute nightmare. So cover each wing one at a time, tack top and bottom surfaces, don't cover over the end rib, feather the ends of the material so that about every four or five uh, millimeters you can roll that over. Look at that rolled over, lovely. And then the golden rule is keep the iron moving. And uh, I'm just going to do the other wing.